By this time next week, Jacksonville City Council will vote on the biggest project to hit the River City, the $1.4 billion stadium renovation. Parts of that agreement, though, are still shifting. The biggest piece still being decided is the $300 million community benefits agreement. It's money that would go toward neighborhood development, and the Jacksonville City Council is going to vote Thursday to decide if that CBA should be separated from the stadium's, stadium's lease agreement. And then a week from today, council members will vote on the stadium agreement. News for Jacks reporter Jim Pickett has been following the stadium deal since it was introduced a year ago. He spoke with those who are proposing changes to the plan and shares how much this could wind up costing us. So we're still trying to learn what exactly could happen, but the stadium renovations, everything we've seen, that could remain the same. This community benefits agreement, which is being pulled out, all that's gonna be left in is things for parks like here, Metropolitan Park, and all of the parks along the river. They're talking about leaving 55 million to do that. The other projects will come up later this summer. If and when the stadium is renovated, it's expected to change the neighborhood around it. But how the 300 million for the community benefit agreement called the CBA will be used is still up in the air. There will be another special council meeting this Thursday looking at the agreement. Council President Randy White said at that time he'll propose an amendment to the lease agreement that would use $55 million from the city for park improvements and take up the rest of the CBA later this summer. Because, he says, some council members might have a conflict of interest and wouldn't be allowed to vote on the entire stadium lease because they work for a group that could benefit from the CBA. He told me on the phone today he wants all council members to be able to weigh in on the stadium deal. Didn't think it was right that five or maybe as many as six would have to abstain from voting if it, was all, if it stayed packaged together. White's amendment will have to be approved by the full council. The mayor's office had been pushing to keep all of this deal together, but Mayor Donna Deegan's chief of staff, Darnell Smith, believes this plan could work because they're keeping the parks in the deal, and the other parts of the agreement will come up later, like improvements to the east side neighborhood. Our understanding is that there are no conflicts uh, with the parks, and therefore they are prepared to move forward with the parks. We will continue discussions on the other two items, the out east uh, focus as well as our entire focus around uh, countywide items. But we have every intention of having every aspect of the CBA approved by the city council. Some council members, like Rockman Johnson, aren't sure how this is going to play out. There's no guarantee it's going to pass, but I think that we need to do our part to try to keep it together if we can. It obviously looks like it's going to pass and talking to everybody else yeah. and just doing parks. Sure. Do you think it's going to water down everything else? We can't let it water down. I will not let it water down on my watch. And we will see how all of this will play out on Thursday with a final vote on the stadium deal set for next Tuesday night. Jim Pickett, Channel 4, The Local Station. Even if the city council votes to approve the Stadium of the Future agreement, the renovations would not be set in stone. The next step would be a vote from the NFL owners. Now, if both the city council <clears throat> and NFL owners vote to approve their agreement as is, construction would begin in February. The Jaguars would still play at Everbank in 2025 with the stadium at almost full capacity. Work would pick up in 2026. The Jaguars, again, they would play at Everbank in 2026. However, capacity inside the stadium would be reduced. The 2027 season, the Jaguars would hit the road. They would play in Gainesville or Orlando. The goal would be to have the renovations complete and the stadium reopened in time for the 2028 season.